Welcome to Hamer Reviews. My name is Christopher Hamer, and today we're looking at the second part in my solar power series in the UK, where I'm going to be detailing my installation, my experience during it, um, from start to finish. Well, almost finished, but we'll get to that a bit later, um, and how things have been going um, since I started this project. So we started out in March to give you a bit of background, and we uh, got in touch with an installer we already knew and sort of explained what we wanted, and the process started rolling from there. Now, because I wanted, and I was pretty hell-bent on this, a six kilowatt inverter, um, we had to do a G99 application to our grid operator, and that took uh, about 40 days to get back. And that's pretty standard, 45 to 60 days, but that sort of delayed everything a little bit. Now, up until this point, my installer had already um, tried to order the uh, inverter, the uh, solar panels, all the mounting equipment, etc., that we'd need for the install. So in theory, once we got the go-ahead, it should have been just been a case of, of doing that. Now, unfortunately, um, although we got the panels and indeed we also got the um, inverter, what we didn't get um, from on sort of the time we needed the deliveries were the roof hooks and the mounting equipment to actually mount the panels to the um, roof, as you can see now. It's a bit of a frustrating uh, situation, but the company called Renusol uh, that makes the things that we needed, um, unfortunately just had, I guess, supply chain issues and you just couldn't get them. Now, I'd like to shout out HDM Solar. Um, they're a, a small company um, being run up north in the UK and they were able to get us some of the roof hooks. Unfortunately, it then turned out we needed slightly different ones, uh, which again, were a bit painful to get hold of, um, but we did get there in the end and we started installing uh, the system at the start of August. So as you can see, already about five months um, from the sort of, you know, firing shot being fired, it, it took us to get them um, on the roof. Now, the actual install went relatively well. Um, I think that the uh, the guys that were doing it um, had a few issues with a lot of tiles breaking on the uh, other roof because the roof is quite old. Um, but in the end, we managed to get there and we now have panels that are installed. Um, just to give you a bit of background, we're currently standing in front of the um, south facing array. So this is a south southwest uh, configuration. We have 10 of these LG Neon H plus 400 watt panels. Um, so a max output from just this side of four kilowatts. And then we have the exact same on the other side of the roof, which is north northeast facing. Now, again, the north northeast um, roof is um, kind of an interesting one. Again, I was advised that it wasn't really a good idea, uh, that I wasn't going to see a huge amount of output from it. But to be honest with you, I'm seeing the solar system um, kick into gear at about 5 30 in the morning at the moment, and I'm shooting this in the middle of August, and it's already producing enough power to actually make a difference at six o'clock in the morning. So Clearly, um, it is paying off, and although they're producing significantly less power than the south side, as I would expect, um, they are producing quite a lot of power. Now, I was very adamant about the six kilowatt inverter, and I kind of thought from the calculations I'd done, um, and I'm not an expert, that we'd probably see about like a five kilowatt peak output from the panels to the inverter. At the moment, this is turning out to be closer to four. Now, I think part of the reason for this is we currently still have the scaffolding up, and as a result of that, there is actually quite a lot of shading um, on the panels at various times of day from the actual scaffold, um, such as the one you can see above at the moment. You can see how that's affecting the panels, um, but I guess that um, at the moment, that's kind of how much we're going to get. Maybe we'll get a little bit more once the scaffold comes down, and the panels have actually got incredibly dirty. It's been very dry, very hot in the UK, really weird for summer. Um, it's usually never this nice. Uh, in fact, it's far too nice because we have a drought warning now. Um, but the panels are incredibly dusty and maybe that's affecting things as well. But overall, I guess I may have over-egged it slightly. Now, because I'm planning that, that second array on the flat roof in the back um, at some point in the future, I won't need to go back to that uh, to the grid operator in order to make another application for G99 to get more capacity or more output rather uh, approved. So that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, kind of slightly less output than I was expecting, but the initial impression is fantastic. Um, producing power from, well, decent amounts of power from 6 a.m. until 8 p.m. at night. So I certainly can't complain. So let's head over to the garage and uh, take a look at the inverter in a bit more detail. So we've moved from the very hot roof to the very hot garage, um, and this is essentially the brains of the solar operation that we have installed. This is the Solar Edge SE6000H. It's one of their HD wave inverters that features really high efficiency. I think it's about 99%, uh, which means that we are basically using as much of that uh, power that the panels are producing it, that comes into these two cables as DC power and leaves the inverter as AC power here, which my house can make use of. It really is as simple as that. I have this armored cable which follows around the garage and up to the loft before it gets to the panels. 
and then you have the inverter which then you know you have the AC power that comes out here into another isolator and then into the house via this pipe here so overall it's it's a pretty simple setup as a as an owner you don't really see much or hear much um the last cable you can see coming out of here is a wi-fi antenna that's mounted on the top as well. This does have Wi-Fi built in as standard, um, and we can use that to access the Solar Edge monitoring platform, because as you will notice, there is no screen attached to this inverter. In fact, it's pretty standard now, I think, that you're getting less and less inverters with screens, because they all have their associated apps that allow you to see all the specs about them. Now, Solar Edge is um, on their app, they'll basically give you the information about how much power it's producing, and if you have optimizers on each of your panels, it will also show you the output per panel, that you know, for that given day or period of time. And that's a way you can sort of monitor your system. Now, if you log into Solar Edge's web app, you get a lot more granular detail. You can compare different aspects um, of, say, DC power production. You can help it to diagnose problems, etc. if you have any. Hopefully you don't. Um, but yeah, that's pretty great. Now, other inverters might give you other information. Solar Edge doesn't give you the temperature of the inverter, which is a bit of a shame because I have a project in mind for actively cooling this with two fans to see if it improves our output. Um, but hopefully we can still get a good video uh, without that information. Um, and overall, as an owner, there, there just is nothing for me to do. It just works. The system, as I mentioned before, comes online at about uh, 6 o'clock, 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, starts producing power and just sends it to the house. Now, if you were wondering, and I was, so I'm going to tell you as well, how your house differentiates between grid power and solar power, the process is actually that the inverter will provide the power to your house at a slightly higher voltage than the grid is outputting, and as a result, your house uses your power before it uses the grid power. Kind of fascinating. I didn't know that. I'm not a physicist, I'm not an electrician or expert on, on uh, electrics. So yeah, kind of interesting to know. You might find it useful too. But yeah, that, that's it. Now, one thing that you might have noticed though, uh, before I say that's it, is I haven't mentioned the battery. Now, I mentioned the battery in a previous video, not in this one. Now, the battery is mounted just in front of me against the other wall, and I'll put a picture of it up now. But we unfortunately didn't have a part we needed um, whilst the installer was here installing the inverter. As a result, having to wait till next week uh, when I'm going to be uh, having that installed now, we were missing the Modbus meter. Now the Modbus meter basically will communicate between the inverter and battery um, and tell it how much sort of power my house is using and the grid, you know, whether we're sending to grid or taking away from it. And the battery isn't installed yet, but hopefully it will be in the very near future. My experience as a whole of the install, as I started to outline above, was relatively good. Now the installer I have I trust and he's done a good job installing things, incredibly clean work um, in terms of from cable routing to ensuring everything spick and span, the panels being completely straight on the um, roof and level, etc. There are some things that were just out of our control. The general supply chain just is a challenge. And, you know, I mentioned the roof hooks and that slowing things down. And just more generally, you know, I wasn't able to install the Tesla Powerwall 2, which was the initial plan, um, having had such a good experience of that at my parents' house. But if you're willing to look for alternatives, even if like me, you're hoping to put together quite a premium system, there are still alternatives out there. In my case, the Solar Edge battery provides, hopefully very soon, all of the features of the Tesla Powerwall 2, but currently a lot of the features of the Tesla Powerwall 2. Now, there is less control, for instance, that's something which I know I'll find a bit frustrating initially of the battery as an owner, but again, hoping to see movement on that from Solar Edge soon. Um, and I'll absolutely give you my lowdown in the next video on that. But you know, if you didn't want to go ultra premium, you could go for companies like Pylon Tech or Give Energy, who seem to have relatively good um, availability of their products. It just depends on what you want to do. Now, for me, it was really important to have optimizers so I could see exactly how much each panel was producing and use that to determine the north and south um, sort of uh, output and which is better. But you know, maybe that's not your situation. Maybe you've got a perfectly south facing roof with no shading and as a result, you don't want that. And I did note in my last video and indeed on some of the Facebook groups I'm part of that, you know, there is this sort of divide on optimizers. And I read some interesting research on it uh, from Denmark recently about, um, you know, if you're in perf if you're in an extremely sunny environment with um, very little shading, 
uh, or even you know even some shading, you might not see benefits from optimizers. But in the UK, as much as we're currently having the craziest summer I've ever experienced, the long and short of it is we do usually have a lot of cloudy weather, and at that point, Solar Edge optimizers do seem to perform very well. So for me, it's worth it from that perspective too. It just depends on what you want, and I think that's the thing I'm going to try and re reiterate throughout all of these videos. There is a lot of um, advice out there on the internet and from installers and from companies producing this equipment. And you can absolutely follow any of that advice. I, I did myself. Um, but at the end of the day, it's your money. And if you're going to be installing a system and you want to be part of it, you absolutely can be. In the same way that I spec this six kilowatt inverter, which I was hell bent on, even though I'm currently only seeing about four kilowatt peak output from the panels, I don't regret that choice because it gives me more options in the future. Um, you just need to hold your ground to a certain extent. Some installers, perhaps maybe more the national ones, are more likely to have generic um, kits that they want to sell. But if you work with smaller um, installers, they'll probably be able to do more bespoke um, work. Though I'm not saying the big ones can't either. So, you know try and hold your ground if that's what you want to do, if you have something specific in mind and make it work. And if they give you good reasons as to why not, hopefully they'll work with you to adapt what you want to do to get you a good outcome. And that's what we did. You know, We weren't able to get the exact panels we wanted, but the installer went out and said, hey, look, I can get this, this, and this. Would these work for you? And you know, although overall we've got 800 watts less output um, from the panels, I have panels which have even better performance for the size that they are. So, you know, there's swings and roundabouts of all of this. Hopefully you found this second video useful. If you haven't watched the first part um, about sort of specking an install and how you should go about it, then absolutely check that out. That's uh, linked above and will be at the end as well. And the next video we're probably gonna have go up is on the battery. I've also got a plan to do a video on the north facing roof uh, and talk about, you know, whether it's been worth it and my general impressions from that. And then we're going to be doing monthly or at the very least quarterly updates on the um, full array, talking about the output we've had and the experiences and issues I've had. So make sure you subscribe and don't miss those. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments section below. And at this stage, I'll say thank you very much for watching. And I do hope I see you again next time. Goodbye.